This month we're looking back at the year 2022, taking a sneak peek at next year and introducing the Pine Tab 2. This is a video version of the Community Day Update, which is more of a summary, so for more info about all of these topics, check out the version on the blog. Also thanks to Lucas, Thanos, Mark, and Emmy for their contributions to this update. For starters, we would like to thank everyone who contributed to having the project run smoothly in 2022. The project admins, chat and forum moderators, community update contributors, and more. We'd also like to thank all community and partner project developers who make Pine64 possible. In particular, a massive thanks to Marek for his incredible work in the past year steering this project. Last but not least, we would like to thank all of you who are part of the community and help drive the project forward. We had a great Q&A session in November with countless questions being asked, and in the future we may make the Q&A session a bit longer to accommodate more questions. We'd also like to hear your feedback on how we can make the Q&A sessions more productive and better overall. Make sure to let us know in the comments or in the chats. If you missed the latest live Q&A session, then you can watch it here on this channel. We also are going to have a stall at Fostum 2023, and we have a huge number of things prepared for the meetup, and there will be at least one important announcement we'll be making on February 4th, so if you're in Europe and able to travel, then make sure to pop by our stall and say hi. Work on the new Pine64 community website is ongoing, and while we don't really have an ETA for the new page's launch at this time, it is shaping up really nicely thanks to the work by a handful of community contributors, including Vincent, who's behind the new layout and visual assets. The new website will focus on the community, giving this blog more of an exposure and allowing quick and easy access to all available documentation as well as chats and forums. Pine64EU is receiving restock shipments soon with the most popular devices, including the PineSoul, PineBook Pro, and PinePhone Pro. This restock should occur in the next 10 days, although shipments during the holiday season and in the following weeks may take longer to arrive at their destinations, so just a heads up for that. Stay up to date, follow the EU stores Macedon, Twitter, and Telegram news channels. Lastly, the off-topic chat was temporarily closed by Matthew due to a clash between multiple members of this community. Internally, this raised a question about whether the code of conduct is sufficient enough to allow for consequential moderation, and if we should create a moderation guideline for the mods. I want everyone to know that we will be taking steps to make the community free of unnecessary conflict by working towards a more active but balanced and non-intrusive moderation team. Off Topic has now been reopened and will be closely monitored. As for newsflash, last month we notified you that there may possibly be delays in the production of the PineBuds Pro, Aux 64, and Star 64. While the delays of the PineBuds Pro and Aux 64 were relatively minor, no more than two weeks, the delay of the Star 64 may be considerably longer. We're working towards having the Star 64 out as soon as possible prior to Chinese New Year starting on January 22nd, but a firm release date isn't known as of yet, so stay tuned for updates. Speaking of the Aux 64, is now one, if not the, best-selling Pine64 SBC. The December batch sold out very fast, but rest assured that more Aux 64s are on the way, and a restock is currently scheduled for January of next year before Chinese New Year. Some awesome internal work on PineSoul V2 Bluetooth has been showcased earlier this month by Jurek, and his video shows the PineSoul V2 connecting via Bluetooth to a PC and projecting key stats in a browser. Currently, this web application is effective, just a fancy large display for the PineSoul V2, projecting all the telemetry on a large screen, but it doesn't allow for any control input into the iron. This may be a feature, however, in the future. The newest version of PineSoul V2, which is now in production, will ship with the firmware version 2.20, with numerous improvements. Aside from the fair collection of bug fixes, it also includes cold junction calibration, which was reworked, and it takes place on each boot to make it easier to perform when the device is cold. Moreover, it also comes with a complete language pack. Diet Pi now offers significantly improved support for Quartz 64, with the most recent release of the OS shipping with Kernel 6.1.0 Release Candidate 1, which features support for Model B onboard Wi-Fi. Moreover, the build comes with mainline U-Boot, which resolves issues with certain types of SD cards as well as EMMC modules. Now let's do a quick look back at 2022. January saw the launch of both the PinePhone Pro and the keyboard case for the PinePhone, and as far as Pine64 devices have gone, there hasn't been many hardware launches that drew quite this much attention from the press and the broader Linux community as that of the Pro version of our Linux smartphone and the accompanying keyboard case. The PinePhone Pro will remain our flagship Pine64 mainline-based smartphone for a long time to come, and it is thrilling to see so much work and development gradually maturing the software on this platform. March saw the introduction of Quartz Pro 64 with its development board and the first board in our lineup to feature the RK3588 SoC. As a platform, the RK3588 may prove to be an important ARM SoC for Pine64 that in time will find its way into devices. The PineBuds Pro were introduced as part of this year's April Fool's joke. 
The Buds landed earlier this month in the store, and we hope to see much more development around them in the coming months. As mentioned in November, we're waiting for a release of a Linux firmware flashing tool, which will open the device up to much more hacking and flashing. PineBuds Pro hold a promise of being a device similar to that of the PineTime and PineSoul, a device that anyone can pick up while also granting tinkerers and developers an open playground. In July, we launched the PineSoul V2. In the spirit of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, the PineSoul V2 is a iterative improvement over the original. The new silicon brings with it Bluetooth connectivity and improves the soldering iron's performance, which landed the top spot on Tom Hardware's best soldering iron list. And with recent developments enabling PineSoul's connectivity, we see it becoming an even better device than it already is. August and October saw the introduction of Star64 and Aux64, respectively, our first RISC-V Linux-capable boards. While they might not be our first RISC-V SBCs, they certainly aren't our last. To the contrary, they're the beginning of a much bigger trend within the Pine64 project. The Aux64 is probably one of the best-selling items in the Pine store to date, and this shows both the interest in the RISC-V architecture and a need for inexpensive boards such as the Aux64 on the market. As a whole, this year was dedicated to exploring and setting course for the future, both in terms of SBCs and devices. We now have a handful of very interesting SOCs on our hands, the RK3566 and JH7110 in particular. The coming year will see much development of these platforms, and I foresee great things built on these two SOCs. Which leads us to our 2023 sneak peek. We're very interested in the RISC-V architecture and the much-anticipated Aux64 and Star64 are early manifestations of our plan for years to come. It should however be stated clearly that while we have a strong will to explore, innovate, and drive the RISC-V hardware space, that doesn't mean we're saying farewell to ARM as a platform. Pine64 ARM and RISC-V platforms will coexist in the years to come and serve as a basis for future SBCs and devices. We're not rushing things either. We have a plan for this year, and you can expect to see a slow but steady trickle of RISC-V news from us in the coming months. We expect to demo some really exciting stuff at Fostum 2023, with functional prototypes being on display for everyone who will show up at the stall to check it out. This month, we're introducing the PineTab 2 based on the RK3566. This isn't a pro-grade device, but rather a complete revamp of the original PineTab. You're getting a metal chassis that is very sturdy, while also being easy to disassemble for upgrades, maintenance, and repair. Taking the PineTab V2 apart is as simple as undoing a set of snap tabs and removing the metal back chassis, as is the case with the PineBook Pro, PinePhone, and PinePhone Pro. We'll also be offering replacement parts for the PineTab 2 down the road. PineTab 2 will feature two USB-C ports, one of which is USB 3.0 and the other is intended for charging and features USB 2.0 speeds. There's also a dedicated micro HDMI port for video output and there are two cameras on the V2, a front facing 2 megapixel camera and a rear facing 5 megapixel one. We haven't settled yet on the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module yet, but two are being tested right now and PCIe is exposed on the PCB, but don't expect most NVMe SSDs to fit inside the chassis. However, other peripherals may fit the 9mm thick envelope of the PineTab 2. The exposed PCIe won't be an advertised feature, so consider it just a nod to hackers who may be able to make use of it. A micro SD card slot and an audio jack are also present and can be found on the leading edge of the chassis. One of the things that excited people about the original PineTab was its backlit keyboard, which doubled as a protective carry cover. We know that a detachable keyboard is a feature most of you want, so we'll be making a return with the introduction of the V2. And yes, we're making sure it will double up as a protective case too. The keyboard hosts a fiberglass panel and features the same circuitry as the PineBook Pro, so firmware written for the PineBook Pro keyboard will work the same on PineTab 2 as well. On launch day, there will be a variant with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of flash, as well as 4GB of RAM and 64GB of flash. We're currently hoping to bring the PineTab V2 to the market sometime after Chinese New Year, but it's too early to offer a firm date yet. However, development units are planned to start shipping this December. A price point for either of the variants hasn't been settled on yet, but it will be affordable regardless of which version you settle on. Those of you who will be attending Falstom early next year, make sure to come and see us and check out the prototypes. Finally, for PinePhone Pro news, Sailfish OS on the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro have improved significantly, and the operating system is actually being very close to becoming daily driver on the original PinePhone. Both devices have some back-end improvements made in the driver for the PinePhone modem, which should significantly reduce issues with the modem not working properly after the device wakes up from deep sleep. This improvement has been merged into the Maggie kernel, so it will affect all distros for the PinePhone that use it. But both the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro ports of Sailfish OS have been updated to the latest 6.0 version of Maggie's kernel. Overall, the Sailfish OS team has made some incredible progress, meaning we'll have another solid option for potential daily driving for people who wish to make the switch to mobile Linux.
Maggie has a new version of the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro kernel coming soon, and there have been some major improvements coming. The camera support patch for the original PinePhone was completely rewritten for the latest version of the CSI driver from Mainline. A bug where sometimes the power button would appear to be held down when waking up from deep sleep has been patched, and the DRM driver was improved on the original PinePhone, and the PinePhone Pro's display driver has been patched to support a full 60Hz refresh rate instead of the 53 it was getting before. There is some important info regarding the PinePhone Pro keyboard accessory, but the good news, the power management driver for the keyboard has been merged into the kernel and it should work a lot better now, and the improvements made should result in much better battery life as a result of it using an algorithm optimized for maximum efficiency using strategies that minimize the charging of the PinePhone's internal battery. However, a firmware bug has been discovered on the PinePhone keyboard that causes it to draw more than twice the expected amount of power while on standby. This means that it can fully undercharge your PinePhone batteries in about 3 weeks if left undertended. Lastly, Kali Linux has created a custom build officially supporting the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro called Kali NetHunter Pro. Kali NetHunter is a bare metal installation of Kali Linux with Fosh and optimized for mobile devices. As with any other PinePhone OS, you can boot from the SD card to dual boot Kali alongside the main OS. Kali Linux announced that they will soon release an alternative version of Plasma Mobile as well as with installers so you can install Kali NetHunter Pro onto the internal flash memory. It is awesome to see non-mobile Linux specific projects picking up the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro and using both the devices in really interesting ways. So that is it for this month and see you next month.